What's up guys? I'm Chris Carson and we are here live with Steady. Wow, what a awesome Tuesday it is so far. And today I want to share with you one of the, the greatest breakthroughs, one of the biggest things that has uh, revolutionized a lot of what we do and a lot of what we're doing in the event space. Obviously, we're in the, uh, the COVID-19 uh, era, but uh, the, I guess the, the punchline here is, is I want to go over uh, once we're able to back, finally go back outside and go into the field and you know be with people, um, I want to go over with you something that is going to change everything for, uh, for you, uh, just like it's changed everything for, for my team and what we're doing. So that is the drum, drum roll, please, Command Center 10.0. So, um, building off of you know previous iterations, previous generations of Command Center, uh, Command Center uh, 8 is probably the most stable and the most well, widely known uh, build or configuration of the Command Center uh, for uh, video production and live streaming. But um, Command Center 8 was focused specifically for doing things like long-term fixed um, interviews or some kind of video production, right? Where you don't need to move, everything is just cameras placed and they live there for however long. That's Command Center 8. Very uh, efficient, very streamlined. Um, that, and, and what's crazy is, is that all fits inside that orange case there you see behind me. So um, Command Center 8 is here to stay. Uh, Command Center 9 was the first version of a true mobile um, solution. And what that was, was basically a similar deal uh, as we've got here. I've got, uh, I'm going to try to not show too much skin <laughs> today, but uh, I've got a, a Zoom F6 here on my hip like I had for 9.0. Uh, 9.0 was great because it enabled basically us to have a no longer need a, a, a tripod and with the iPad and all that other stuff. I could have the um, the sound here on my hip, and I can have a an iPhone attached to uh, the sound on the F6, which was fabulous because it it streamlined that entire process. It enabled literally everything for me, my body, to be the command center. Uh, <laughs> as cheesy as that is in sounds, um, it's so it's so so uh, true though. So. I want you to know that also, guys, just a side note, this is a, a, this is a Facebook Live. So that means it is up to you to, if you've got questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm going to be getting to all of those here in just a few minutes. So that was Command Center 8. That was Command Center 9. Uh, then, uh, you know, looking at using it in the field and, and seeing its strengths and its weaknesses, I learned a lot about like, oh, well, every time I walk down an aisle or something, I've got to like, ugh, I've got this like phone sticking out here. I've got to like, ugh, and like squeeze by people, you know, and it, <laughs> it wasn't exactly optimal. Um, and, you know, doorways were a problem and things like that when I had basically like eight inches extra of an iPhone sticking out here on my hip. And so what I did was kind of just go back to the drawing board and think about how can we make this better? How can, we, uh, how can we find a solution, something that nixes the, you know, the, the, the complex nature that that was? And by the way, it wasn't really that complex. Um, but, um, but would enable us to, instead of, so, well, let me just explain for those of you that don't know Command Center 9. Command Center 9 was a DJI Osmo. And it basically had an iPhone up top and I was able to just, you know, use it as a camera. And that was cool because we could move freely throughout a space and it was, it was amazing. So, uh, but the, the problem was is that in order to start a recording or a live stream is I had a Elytra Pro, um, you know, I had to hold Elytra Pro and the Osmo. And so I would have to juggle my hands, juggle the light, bring the light down and then just, uh, just plug it in or, you know, hold it. And then on the phone down here that's being used as a switcher, hit record or go live. And so that was a that was a thing like five four three two one, and we're live. Grab the light and then you know some, and then start the stream. So, whoo, that was a workout. Saying all of that, um, but looking at 
looking at how difficult that was to do every single stream, and then knowing that not only I myself needed to do it, but my team needed to do it as well. They needed to understand how to make all this work very quickly and easily for everything that they are doing in the field. So in order to find a way to just streamline this entire thing, you know, it's crazy. A lot of it was solved with software. But I'm bump, right? And that's the point. That's the punchline of, of what we use uh, with a lot of this technology. It's, it's all about the software versus the hardware. See, all these breakthroughs in technology, I mean, a, a Switcher Studio as a whole, using it as a live streaming solution, uh, enables us to use iPhones and iPads to, to record and live stream in good quality using, uh, you know, again, um, iPhones. So the software itself replaces a whole table full of equipment and thousands of dollars um, saved just by using this software solution. Um, having the ability to run the switcher on an iPhone instead of an iPad streamlines the entire thing even more. So, Switcher came out with an update recently uh, called 4.4, and what that enabled was many things. Um, but probably the two most prominent things that it enabled were two of the, the things we asked for the most, which one was um, better camera communication, meaning on a Wi-Fi network, our cameras, how you see me right now, it's all happening on, on my home Wi-Fi. So, um, when you go to a convention center, Wi-Fi um, suddenly becomes a lot more challenging to use. Um, when you're using multiple wireless cameras, it almost doesn't work or almost didn't work. Well, 4.4 enabled us for the first time <laughs> to walk into a convention center and not have any issues with, uh, with the cameras dropping frames or anything like that because of the new way the cameras communicated major breakthrough. Uh, the second thing that 4.4 enabled uh, that I consider the two biggest things are the, the ability to have not only a live stream and, and recording and whatever else, um, but have better quality itself that the camera, the picture it's sending to the switcher, my iPad right here, uh, right now, is a much better image in 4.4 than it was in 4.3. They figured out some new things, they tried some stuff, and they made a break, major breakthrough on the overall quality itself. Big deal. Uh, so when it came to that, that was like, that was the final thing needed in order for us to be able to improve upon Command Center 9 and no longer rely on a function called Director Mode. And those of you that don't know what director mode is in Switcher Studio, it's a function that enables, without getting too technical, it enables the camera to record a much higher quality picture, uh, say maybe a 1080 or a 4K image, uh, 4K video, in a much higher um, bit rate quality um, than what you're getting inside the live stream on your iPad that's sitting on my desk that you guys can't see. Um, I, you know, for all of your videos, for all your live streams and whatever else. Major, major breakthrough um, there. So now we are able to ditch um, the second device and go down to a single device. So, ladies and gentlemen, for the very first time, I know I've been talking about it for a long, long time in the comments and everything else, this is Command. Center 10.0. So I'm just going to fire her up here and uh, we can get to see this this gal in all of her glory. All right, so we've got her fired up here. This, as I keep saying, this is Command Center 10.0. So this is everything that we need in order to do a live stream right here uh, in one hand. <laughs> Ah, what a breath of fresh air. Because as you guys know from the story I tell all the time, it was not always like this. This is unbelievable. I've got everything I need in order to live stream. So I've got, uh, let's, let me just start breaking it down for you. So I've got a camera up top that can be used as a switcher and the camera itself. Meaning 
uh, for those of you that are, again, that are familiar with Switcher Studio, it enables, it has a iPhone uh, interface that enables us to include things like graphics, pre-recorded video, pictures, um, whatever you want, you can add on the screen. Like as an example, you guys saw that video on the front end um, of this live stream. That was one of the cool things Switcher enables. So I can do that all right here um, on this one device that's also the camera. And because it's on the Osmo, if I lightly, and that's the key, lightly tap on the screen, it doesn't read or doesn't shake the camera. That was always a problem before. So um, what else do we have? Well, it's a DJ, we've got it on a DJI Osmo 3, and that enables us to, of course, move freely. You know, and as a Steadicam operator, I greatly appreciate the ability to not have a fixed, locked down, boring uh, shot. I love movement. And so whenever we can, you know, if we're doing a walk and talk interview, we can now follow the talent or even lead and see where we're able to see where we're going because now we can move. Command Center 8 wasn't able to do that. Uh, or if it did, it was kind of a pain. <laughs> this is not. Uh, and so we've got, uh, continuing on down the line here, the DJI Osmo 3, uh, we've got uh, our sound. So uh, here is a Sennheiser AVX, um, and I've just got a cord with a few adapters plugged in and going up to the iPhone to bring in the microphone audio that you can hear, you know, that way you can hear, right? That's not how the, it, technically, that's not exactly how it's working today, but this is for demonstration only. I've got, uh, I've got the sound on my hip here going to my iPad here sitting on the desk. But again, this is the capability. All wireless audio, all wireless video, and for once, you no longer need to worry about frame drops with your cameras. If this is the only one, well, this is the switcher. So there is no Wi-Fi communication here for the cameras. It's all right here. So boom, another major, uh, <laughs> another major problem solved. Uh, let's talk about audio. So um, the, the biggest thing that I can say, oh gosh, I can feel like I, the biggest, the biggest, the biggest, man, these are all big things. Um, this setup, this configuration will enable you to live stream for an entire day. An entire day, guys. I'm talking eight plus hours in the field shooting straight. All day. And, and obviously using the iPhone 11 Pro, it's cellular connected so we can live stream using the cellular or maybe even pair it with, let me just reach over here, pair it with a uh, Netgear M1, one of my favorites uh, for Wi-Fi and a solid internet connection. Um, you can pair it with that, maybe toss this M1 in, uh, in your back pocket here, front pocket, whatever you want. Uh, you toss it in your pocket and then boom, there that is. Um, so you can use, combine, combine it all with Speedify to have two connections into one for a super stable connection. Uh, what else? We've got, um, <laughs> we've got our, um, well, I don't know, we've got a lot of things going on here and it's pretty compact. Um, so we've got uh, all day battery life on the Zoom F6. Uh, it runs off of four double A's. So you pair it with uh, lithium batteries and you're gonna get a solid, uh, solid day there. We're using, as I, I've already said, Sennheiser AVX uh, microphones where basically uh, the microphone I'm wearing here is transmitted through a mic pack I got on uh, here and sent over here, but if, if I was the on-screen talent, um, and, or, or if I was just a camera guy and I had, was shooting someone else, then obviously I could pull in their microphone here on the F6 up to six total people. So whether it be handheld microphones or wireless lavaliers, you can, you can pair a, a total of six. Having that capability on such something that's so small is on believable from where I started, uh, you know, with the, the soundboard and all that other big stuff, you know, it's, it's crazy that this fits on our hip. Another great thing about the F6 is, of course, right now it's also recording my audio. Of course, you guys can hear me on the, on the, I, 
you know, the audio going through the iPad to the live stream and all that good stuff. But what if I needed better quality? What if I wanted something up to 32-bit float? Well, the Zoom F6 finally gives us, gives the industry that ability to record a unbelievably repairable um, sound file. As an example, if if we were suddenly, if we were talking and the microphones were too hot and it's all, it's totally blown out, a 32-bit float enables us to pull that back in post and repair that audio file essentially. Uh, so sound isn't lost. So if, obviously that doesn't work for live streaming, but if you're video production, then hey, there you go. That's a, that is one, uh, another advantage to this system. Um, the Sennheiser AVXs are perfect microphones because as you see this tiny receiver here, you know, if you you can easily mount six of those on this, uh, on this F6, on this little mixer and be done. You don't have to have a bunch of stuff, a bunch of cords hanging off and like a bunch of other microphone systems you've seen uh, out there. So again, I, I can beat this one to death, but th this configuration is the most, um, this is the best way to do it in my opinion. Uh, last point about the AVXs um, that you guys have heard me say over and over again, when it comes to interference and the prevention of interference, holy smokes, the AVXs are the way to go. No more of this manual configuration for scanning UHF channels every time you go to somewhere else in the building. That game is over. That horse is, is dead. Um, <laughs> so um, no need to do that anymore. You just turn these babies on and that's it. You're good to go within a few seconds. And um, what else? So, I mean, I guess that's kind of it. So I'll give you guys a close-up here what you see, so you can see kind of what this... Uh, what this F6 looks like. Uh, so we've got the, uh, got the F6 here right on my hip. I'm literally just wearing a belt, my normal everyday belt. And again, I, I said I would try to prevent showing too much skin today. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is it. Ta-da! Oh, and we've got one cord here. For this one cord, you'll see another AVX um, mic pack here that's transmitting audio um, to the switcher, whatever switching device you're using, whether it be, so if that was, if that was this, you know, we could, it could, could be sending audio directly up here and we've just got this one single cord to deal with. Unbelievable, right? I think it is. And, uh, so what does it look like in, in practice? So I forgot one to grab one thing before I started this live. So let me go run it and I'll be right back in, in three seconds. Four, three, two, one, stuff and things. I'm gonna keep talking because I still need to find this thing over here. Bear with me, guys. I appreciate you joining the live today. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments, guys. This is going to be a live q and Gonna be getting to all of those here in just a second. So, one of my favorites, uh, the final thing to pair all of this with is a Lytra Pro. Uh, big fan of the Lytra Pros because not only are they super bright, uh, 1200 lumens capable out of this unbelievable uh, form factor. Of course, you see the iPhone 11 Pro, you know how big that is. There's this light. So, super compact um, and waterproof and, you know, color temp adjustable and has Bluetooth in it so you can do a bunch of cool things there. You got to definitely look at this light, but how is it, how, how does all of this work in, in practice? So, if I was running a live stream right now, kind of like this one, I would, um, and, and you know, maybe my on-screen talent was over here, you know, I could set up my shot, my, be, my intro shot for whatever I want, maybe I'll do a tilt down, um, and I would literally just turn this light on. Do -do -do -do. I would, as I was saying, I would turn this light on. <laughs> Guys, this is live, how about it? I would turn this light on, all the way on its minimum brightness, so I don't blind everybody. Um, I would turn this light on and I would go, and we're going live in five, four, three, two, and I would start to move and one, and then I would nod to the talent and I would bring the light in, What's, and they would go, hey everybody, we are live. You know, whatever, right? And that's how we do it, and this is all I have to do. Ta-da, da-da, I can move freely, do everything that I need to do, 
with the camera, tell the story visually, and that's it. There it is. What if I need to make an audio adjustment? Well, um, there's actually one piece that I didn't mention that is, um, that is a major breakthrough for this setup as well, and that's these, the Apple AirPods. Whether it be the Pros like these or the regular AirPods, if you, all you need to do, since this is an iPhone, this is a, the switcher, this is where all the audio is going into, well, just pair your AirPods with, your, with this camera, with this phone, and boom, you, you can now hear the on-screen talent wirelessly, completely wireless. Like, get out of here. Uh, so, uh, AirPods, you can hear the talent. If you need to make an adjustment, normally I'll have this light, I'll bring it down like this, grab it with this hand, try to not block the light. Um, obviously, I'm, that's probably, that probably looks a little bit better to you guys. <laughs> uh, I will go ahead and make my adjustment, turn the knob whichever way it needs to be, up or down, and then I would grab the light and come back and continue shooting. Cool? Pretty amazing, right? So that is Command Center 10. It, like, there's not a whole lot to, to talk about here. It's just, it's very simple, very streamlined, and unbelievably powerful for what we can do because now we have better live streaming quality it's we have no um no ability for to have frame drops because uh, you know everything is right here it's just this single device um should you want to include graphics and other things like titles lower thirds whatever uh you can do that too again just simply by using the interface on the on the phone screen here um and like that's it. <laughs> ah, seriously though, on a personal, like a completely personal level, like looking at how the industry has, has and is doing it, looking at how the pros um, go out there with their big fancy setups with all this gear and it takes them forever to set it up and tear it down and, and whatever else, and see the, seeing the quality, um, especially in the last year that people are producing, side by side when you have a team like mine that it's going out and, and shooting for similar clients or similar, you know, shooting at the same events and seeing the content side by side, it is 100% capable. You are, you are one, it is 100% possible for what we do with iPhones and iPads to not only surpass, but blow away the pros, the competition, whatever you want to call them. Um, and so uh, it's all about thinking outside the box. Now, my own personal knowledge and, and skill set um, has many years of experience in many different technologies and things that come together to make all of this work. Of course, um, of course, you know, that's, that's a part of it, and that's something that you need to have, too, to be, you need to know how to shoot, how to move, how to light, how to get good sound. Of course you need to know all these things. But what if you already have a good baseline? This enables us to stop worrying about, oh, well, the light's going to die, or, or whatever, and it just, just start doing, start, start using your imagination, just start going out there and shooting and, and telling a story visually that when I say no one, and I really mean no one is doing in the event space. None of the pros, or at least not yet. Uh, and so uh, I, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, I, I try to find a way to say that that, that doesn't sound uh, arrogant or whatever else, um, but I personally love competition. Um, I welcome it. I think it, it, it forces um, innovation. Uh, which is the best thing for everyone, but um, I just haven't seen en enough people have something or anything close to this. Normally when you see people shooting with iPhones and everything else, it's something that looks closer to Frankenstein uh, rather than um, something streamlined. <laughs> All right, so um, very cool guys. I, I hope that you, you got something out of this. Um, obviously there is a blog uh, that's got a full write-up. It's got this video attached to it. Um, it tells you how to connect it all. It tells you why that piece is there and it also tells you where to get the piece. Um, yay, the best part, right? And all of that is going to cost you 
uh, well, this is going to, for all of this configuration, it's going to cost you some money, but all of what I'm going to charge you to, in order to get all of this information is going to be zero dollars like always. I would rather uh, provide you value um, and help you build your uh, vision, your dream, your company, uh, and get out there and start doing it. And let's change the world for the better together. So um, jumping into those uh, questions and comments, as I promised a few minutes ago, um, because again, that's pretty much it. There's not really a whole lot to talk about. It's pretty stream, <laughs> pretty streamlined. Um, all right, cool. Um, love the pants adapter. <laughs> um, French Alps, what up? Um, how are you getting audio from the F6 over to the iPad? Oh, just answered it. Okay, cool. So again, to, to dive into the audio thing, you know, looking at this configuration, um, that we have we have going on here. Um, so it's all wireless, right? So I've got two essentially two mic packs that are being used for for one person, if that makes sense. Um, so you would have a one uh, wireless lavalier mic pack, uh, the Sennheiser AVX that the talent would wear, like I'm doing here, and that would go into that's this one device, one thing plugged into the F6 here. Additionally, um, you'll have the, um, the F6, an analog signal going out of the F6 into a, another pack I've got, I'm wearing here, and that go, would go up to this uh, receiver here and into the iPhone and ta-da, that's the party. Um, you know, how difficult, um, one of the questions I get too is how difficult is it to move or how heavy is it on your belt or anything like that? Not heavy, it's crazy. Um, <laughs> It's just not heavy. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. If you guys have seen um, the Sennheiser, let me just show you these little batteries here for this uh, AVX. Uh, if you guys see that little battery, I mean, this little guy, um, these only last for about four hours on the receiver, uh, but your, your, your mic pack itself, the, the transmitter that I'm wearing, will last all day, 12 hours. And so these guys are the weakness but uh, how difficult is it to throw just maybe a couple extra of these in one of your pockets and <laughs> you know, now you're good to go. Um, uh, another question I get a lot is, all right, what about, the, the, what about your lighting? How long can we expect the battery to last here? Well, if you're running it at 100% um, full brightness, um, <laughs> which is very bright, uh, you can expect to get about 40 minutes. Now, uh, what I will also tell you in, in practice though, um, running this baby over 60% is a high probability if you're holding it like this for a 10, 15, 20 minute interview, it's a high probability of you losing your fingerprints. <laughs> because this baby gets very, very warm. Um, and so, of course, you're gonna be you know, changing its position and whatever else. But what I will say is, is that, um, you know, Maybe you don't like, as an example, I've got a Lytra Pro that I'm talking into right now with a softbox on it. Um, I've got, uh, these come with um, little diffusers. I don't have one within reach. Yes, I do. I totally just lied. Um, you know, these little pros come with uh, some little silicone diffusers, uh, which, you know, of course work very well. For most interviews, we normally run a light probably like between 65 and 85 percent, depending on the, the ambience of the room. We're not looking to, um, well, let me just walk all this back. With any lighting that you're going to be using with this configuration, you're most likely not going to be providing a normal three-point or whatever else. Uh, you're looking to supplement or add to the existing lighting already in, in the room. And so this is really just used to, like, to bring up the shadows under the eyes and to be able to just see people just a little bit better. Um, that's where this comes in. And so running this, um, one of my tricks or one of the things I started doing recently in the field was knocking this baby down to 40% without any diffusion and just kind of, and just adding it and literally just using it as, as a supplement, just to, again, to raise up the eye shadows and, and whatever else. It works great. Running it at 40% though um, enabled us to basically toss this in our back pocket whenever we're, we're not streaming, pull it back out and use a single light on its own battery all day. I'm talking eight plus hours all day off of just one 
uh, one Nitro Pro. What if you need to, to um, what kind of battery life can you expect out of the iPhone? Well, the 11 Pro um, is unbelievable. Um, you're looking at at least five hours of solid use, and that includes use uh, live streaming, using cellular, using Wi-Fi, whatever. That's gonna it's gonna go all day. One of the things you can do, of course, is turn down the brightness to make it last longer. Um, another thing that you you may look at right now is say, well, wait a minute. What if we could just power it off of the Osmo? And you can um, totally, but you would need to change the way the audio is routed, and that's when this little this little T comes in, uh, and there's many of these online. Not all of these work, but this one and this brand does. It enables you to take in power on one side uh, and the audio on the other side, and, and it's a right angle. So I can literally just plug this in the iPhone and have a cable going from the top, a cable going into the bottom, and now I can power my iPhone from the Osmo. Uh, and if that's, you know, if that's a way, one way you want to do it, totally um, that's one option. Um, the 11 Pro has the advantage, of course, the multiple lenses. Um, this is the first Osmo that you can use when running Switcher Studio and use all three lenses, including the super wide. That's a big deal because using the Osmo Mobile 2, you could see the, the arm in the frame or whatever else, and it just that wasn't, a, that wasn't good. Um, so this is the first configuration that we can use the super wide, which is a big, big deal. Uh, because, you know, again, when it comes to shooting styles, I like to open the world up. See, the reason people love cameras so much, we love watching stories in a, with a visual medium, uh, a TV show or whatever else, is because it's the world defined, or a, a confined, rather. Our eyeballs natively see a very wide field of, of view, um, whereas a camera is a much smaller box, right? So using things like the super wide lens on the 11 Pro enables you to tell a story, very good for Facebook Lives, to tell a story with a much bigger world. And when you have a much bigger world, um, not only is it, uh, it, guys, try it. All I'll say is try it, and then you let me know what you think about it in the comments below. So getting back to those questions and comments. Uh, can the Lytra Pro lights be plugged in uh, from a studio environment and can they change colors, i.e. blue or red? So, uh, yes and yes is the answer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn this guy off for just a second so I can grab a thing um, and, and then show you and answer that question with the prop. So I'm going to go back here. I've actually got a, you see a bunch of, of lighting and things in, in the office here, lots of colors and all that good stuff. Uh, well, this is a Lytra Pro. Um, just the same with a blue gel on it. And of course I've got the diffuser on it to, to you know, to splash some good blue light, you know, behind the old, the OG uh, MacBook Pro there, uh, my very first one. So, um, yes, you can, you can buy gels for these that, that come into a bunch of different colors, which is great. Um, I've got, like I said, I've got a Lytra Pro uh, up here with a softbox. It's, um, you know, again, it's plugged in right now. I, we power these guys all day in the field. So keep them below, um, on or below 85%, and you'll be able to power them all day. When it comes to colors, no, no more than 65% on intensity uh, when powering it externally. Um, that'll keep you going all day as well. Lytra does make a studio light, um, specifically for studio. Um, called the Lytra Studio, <laughs> and it's a bigger light. It's about four times the size of the Pro. Um, it pumps out basically 2,000, what I would call RMS, uh, 2,000 consistent lumens, uh, and peaks around like 3,200 or something like that. It does do colors also with the LEDs that it has. Um, it's a pretty incredible light. It's also um, basically uh, about three times the price. Um, pros and cons there, uh, for what it is and does, I would consider it a, the price alone is, is so worth, so worth, uh, what that light can do specifically. So, um, big, big deal there. I'm going to jump over to another Facebook page and see if anybody's got any questions or comments over here. Um, ba -ba -ba, from Sarasota, what up? Um, uh, can you speak about 
the smoother video in Switcher Studio update. Um, so I'm not really sure it, so the update doesn't provide smoother video, um, but what it does do is it has, uh, I think what you're talking about is like the, the way the cameras communicate for not having uh, frame drops. So those, those of you who know, um, there's a couple things here. I did an episode called Wi-Fi Sucks, and in that episode I literally demoed for you, <laughs> on purpose and completely by accident, um, the why Wi-Fi sucks. Um, I told you and, and spoke with you about how to make Wi-Fi, how Wi-Fi 5 works and how to make, make it work better for your cameras and live streams and everything else um, to prevent frame, things like frame drops. In that episode, we learned that we were experiencing frame drops. And even though we knew a, even though I know a lot about how all this stuff works, that was one of the things that, you know, still plagued, um, you know, just Wi-Fi at the time. There's a couple different things you can do. Um, first off, the 4.4 update includes the new, um, uh, the new camera communication. And it works really well. Um, compared to, it's not a end all be all, but it works, works significantly better for preventing that. So if you haven't updated to 4.4 yet, for goodness sakes, go do it right away. It's a major deal. Uh, the last point on that is um, looking at Wi-Fi 5, Wi-Fi 5 is plagued with interference. It's awful. Trying to, to, when we do live streams in convention centers with, you know, hundreds of Wi-Fi access points in the room and thousands of people in the room, and there's just so much, whew, it is a difficult environment for radio frequency. So being able to live stream um, in those environments, we really not only need to know our stuff, but also use the latest technologies. And one of those things is, um, of course, Wi-Fi 6. Now, the M1 that we talk about a lot is only a Wi-Fi 5 device. There's a new M5 coming uh, here, I believe in May, that, uh, that supports Wi-Fi 6 and 5G. Wi-Fi 6 being the more important thing there when it comes to what we do right away. Um, and of course, uh, I'm a big fan. You guys know the Amplify Alien that's sitting on the uh, sitting on the, uh, the the shelf back there. Um, big game changer when it comes to um, things just working. Um, you know, iPhone, all the 11 series iPhones and, and the newest iPad uh, that we're using here are um, are great. They all have Wi-Fi 6. Things just seem to work a lot better, uh, a lot faster uh, because there's no interference. And there's many reasons for that, but they just work better. So if you are using things like maybe Command Center, um, sorry, I, was, I apologize, I was just checking the thing. If you're using things like, like uh, Command Center 8, something like the Alien uh, will work better for you. Um, you know, in a lot of times and situations when we do events to where there's someone speaking on a stage in the front of the room and, they're, and we're going to be there all day, you know, of course, we'll use things like, uh, we'll use things like the swivel, put this on a, you know, on a, on a monopod or something and put an iPhone on top of it. And of course, this thing just wherever they walk, th this thing tracks them. Um, so we no, no more the, the thumbing, you know, trying to move the Osmo you know, to keep up with people that are zooming past back and forth on a stage. Uh, this guy solves that problem. And then of course the Alien enables us, and, and the Sennheiser AVXs, enables us to basically get out of the room. See, whenever you do live events for video, I th if, some, if, if somebody is running the sound there, video doesn't need to be in the room. Why does video need to be in the room? I think video should have our own lounge. That's I'm, I mean, the client may not pay for it, but at some of these hotels and convention centers, there might be a hallway with some couches or whatever else. We use the Amplify Alien for its range uh, on, why, on how, and how Wi-Fi 6 works for getting outside of the room. So we can go um, not have to whisper with our team there, but and do whatever we need to do very comfortably, very easily, and uh, things just work. I, seriously, I love the Alien um, Wi-Fi 6 router. All right, so um, let me know if you guys have any additional questions in the comments. I don't want to take too much of, I mean, I've already taken 40 minutes, but uh, I don't want to take any longer than, than, than that for this. The blog will be available here in just a few minutes. 
uh, at the end of this live, so you can go check it out, uh, piece your command center 10 together. Um, and guys, like personally for me, again, just like forget the whole business and the whole show thing and everything else, but like this is a major, major breakthrough for, for what we do. I mean, to be able to, to be able to just live, to live stream good quality video and be able to move freely throughout a space, however or wherever or whatever you want. Oh my gosh. It's game changing. Absolutely game changing. And it's, and it's, a, it's a major, major deal. So I would love to hear a couple things from you guys in return um, for all of this is uh, how are you using it? Are you using, you know, are you building your own command center 10? Let me know in the comments. How do you plan on using it? Are you looking at like convention centers, events, weddings? Like what, what are you looking for? Um, and then um, last thing is um, if you got any value out of any of this, I would greatly appreciate a, uh, a follow, a like, and a share, uh, a comment on, on this video. Follow Steady Ready, follow Chris Carson um, page, and let's get the word out to people to enable them to stream better. That's the whole goal. That's the whole punchline here is stream better. Um, so um, thank you again for your time. Again, I'm Chris Carson of Steady Ready. Um, I promise you guys live streaming every single day um, while we are doing COVID, the COVID-19 um, hideaway here. Um, that's probably not the official name, but uh, anyway, you get the point. Um, we're going to be talking with some great people this week as well as uh, doing some more show tips to whenever we're finally able to go outside again, you'll be able to come out swinging with new things, uh, new gadgets and gizmos and things like Command Center 10. So. Thank you so much again. I hope you guys have an awesome day and I will see you tomorrow. See ya.